Welcome back to episode two of Retro Fabworks. On this episode, that, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> episode two, who do I think I am? HBO. Anyway, back to reality. All right, on this episode, we're going to get that Ford Godzilla into the El Camino finally. So we're going to mount this thing up, make some custom bracketry to get this thing actually centered in the car. Now, the trippy part is this isn't going where you think it's going. It's going to be a little weird. So stick around as we actually take the engine and get it inside the Godzilla. There's going to be some fab work. There's going to be some cutting and grinding. It's going to be me sweating with a goofy haircut. So it's uh, it's all there. So tune in, tune out. Let's get rocking and rolling. All right, we are back. It is hot out today. We are actually putting the motor back together. And there's going to be some specialty stuff going up here that's going to go... Which we'll get into later on. But for now, I just want to get the pan on, get the front cover on so I can actually have the size of the motor so we can start getting it in the car because this is how I'm gonna start basing all my measurements. Once the car's actually in there, I'll start making motor mounts, start doing the frame, start seeing how it all lays. And then we get to the fun part. There's gonna be a bunch of fun stuff. There's gonna be a up here and there's also gonna be a transmission and a transfer case that's very special to make all this work. So I wanna get really in depth with each one, but for now we're just gonna pan on, cover on, spin this thing over and start making mounts so I can get this inside of the chassis table itself. So for now, just say hello because we'll be taking this all back out. And then, uh, yeah, we'll start getting really in depth with this later on in life. We'll actually show you what I'm gonna do with the pistons and rods. We'll go through all the specialty pieces that make this engine so incredible. And then we're actually gonna change the cam over, port the heads. So we'll have plenty of time with this motor in the future, but for now, let's just get it together so we can start getting some of the big work done. Intake pans on, we shrunk it down. This isn't going where you think it's gonna go. <laughs> this motor is gonna be set in a very different direction. So this is where the actual fun's gonna begin. After I get these forward and aft tacked, I'm gonna rip out all this gangly tube because now this has a structure to it. Now what you're seeing here is actual rockers that I made. I didn't document this when I was just kind of in the zone, but uh, the old rockers were so disheveled and messed up, I actually just cut everything out. So what I did is I used two by three square tubing, leveled it all off, end capped it, and put it perfectly in the center of the rocker. And now what you see me here do is I'm actually attaching the car to the rocker itself. So I, I center the car, it took me like eight hours to get this thing all in line. And what this is the next process of me actually tacking the car to it. Now I have a base to actually lift the car up. So what you're seeing here is the car coming up. We're getting a little sketchy, a little, a little more sketchy. Yeah, we're getting even more sketchy here. If you could only see it in real life, you probably would have probably would have laughed. But anyway, now that the car's got some structure to it and some solid rockers, I'm tacking everything up and I'm giving myself a ride height of five inches. I don't know if this is going to be where home is, but for now, five inches looks good on the car. But as of now, I'm making my stands. We're raising the car up. I'm actually going to weld the stands of the car and I'm going to center the car again on the stands, weld her up, and now the car is perfectly set at ride height. I'm going to sink the motor back as far back as I possibly can. My plan is, if everything works out, I'm going to use a pro charger on this, like a direct crank drive system off the crank comes forward. Off the schematics, it's like 22 inches. So that means this big boy, I haven't done the math yet, is going to have to be somewhere, somewhere under the cowl, like real far. Not like a pro mod where it's like half in, half out. This is going to be pretty much underneath. We only have so much of a limit down low. 
that's not my real rocker. My real rocker is that piece back there. So if you can imagine that, we'll make an invisible line there too. Then I'll make some posts. But the whole idea is I don't want that pan to be lower than that rocker. We're going to have to find a happy medium where the engine is low as it possibly can be in the center line of the wheel hub and as far back as I could possibly manipulate it without making my life a living hell driving it. I was actually thinking about putting it right in the middle of the car, but then I don't have like a bus, like a bus console sitting there, you know? So anyway, now that you guys are up to speed with that, let's try to think about how we're going to get the engine in. Let's take some measurements and really figure out what we're going to do. I'm having an idea that most of that's going to have to come out. Definitely the windshield wiper. That's got to go, which sucks because I wanted to have the stock windshield wipers in this thing. But we'll figure that down the road. Maybe use a shoestring or something. It looks, it looks way more aggressive that we took some of the height out of it and some of the, the depth. This is going to be fun, guys and girls, if any girls watch this. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, motor in. My goal is to have this motor in. Well, I mean, it has to go in at some point anyway, so. All right, now that we got now that we got our basin, it is time to measure the total height from the top of that lip right there down to the base. And then from there, we are going to measure total height of the engine. And then we're going to pick a spot on our engine mounts that we're going to design. And what we're going to do is I want to place the engine about one to one and a quarter inches below. I don't want this to be tucked too tight. So I figure, I'm just spitballing numbers here. I think an inch over. I feel like I want to go two. Let's do one and a quarter. This gives me enough room. I'm lucky this intake can come off and slide forward, which is pretty cool. So inch and a quarter is what we're going to go with. So I want 1.25 intake height. Hands. All right, so I got 33 inches. 33 inches on the top of that. To this all right i like it 33 inches is our total the total deck height thirty three inches now i'm gonna put the gopro on a stand here because what we got to do is i'm gonna come off of here come out and figure out a fixed point and get that top actually I'm gonna do total engine height and go from there so let me get this on a stand and do some more measurements because I can't do it with both hands <laughs> all right here's the design I came up with and uh, it's really kind of just what I drew but I have all my bolt holes but I did something a little different what I'm gonna do here is I put quarter inch slots in here. So when I weld it on the table, it's like a puzzle piece. All right, something I learned back in the Boy Scouts, what I got is a ruler up top and I have a ruler going straight down. Do another level right here and I'm gonna scribe it from this top line. So now I have, I'll measure this and get my total depth at the top of the intake and I'll square it in my program over there. And let's say this is 20 inches or so. Now that I have this depth, I know how far down or high I have to go to come down. So once I come from here, to here, say if it's 16, 15, or even four inches, whatever this is, I'll make myself a bracket that comes down, boom. And if I do my math correctly, this will hoist the engine up or lower and get me an inch and a quarter 
in the bottom of the rocker. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these measurements now, find out where I gotta go, and then I'll make up the rest with this bracket. So if it's 25 inches and I have to go so and so up, I'm gonna come down. And I also have my angle meter on here to know when I design my bracket what, what angle it's at. But I kinda already knew it was at 45, but it's definitely 45, so that's cool to know to come out. And then I'll just space it out enough to give me some width. I'll probably come out about eight, eight inches or nine inches to give me a good, a good uh, hip pattern or a good breast pattern to come out. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, get that. I got this, I'm gonna get these measurements now, and then from there, I'll start designing to come down. Always keep levels on you, boys and girls. <laughs> Index should pop in. We got lift off. So then, if I measure my base height, so what I'm gonna do now is, well, I'll go back to that thought. If I measure my base height from there all the way to the top, which I'll do here in a minute, I'll uh, I'll have my perfect height. Anyway, so this goes in, good to go. And then I'll put the other one on this side. I'll put a little tab here and lock it in, and a cross brace, and we're in. All right, so they are all done. Let's go put them in, in case you guys don't understand uh, the concept. I think once I drop them in, you'll kind of make it make sense. I was actually gonna start, I was like, why don't I just tie it to the frame now? But the frame has no rigidity. And that engine is, geez, 600 pounds, 500 pounds. So I can't just tie off to my rockers I made yet. I have to do a bunch of stuff. But to get the engine in there and start calculating things and ordering parts and getting transmissions on, this was the best route. So make these stands tie it off there, engine can slide, get it in. And at least we're getting somewhere. I can kind of see where the engine's gonna play out. Let the car kind of just unfold on its own and see where it wants to be. So yeah, if any of you guys are asking why I didn't actually just make it happen and stick with it, because the rockers, if you guys see them, are just in there tacked. The whole car is kind of sitting there. It's starting to get rigid, but I want to start building things around the engine to tie the rockers together. So we've got to take a hard route to get to the easy route. Boom, there's one. So now I can slide it. Let's get the other one in.
<laughs> I just uh, I was just staring at this thing for a little bit. <laughs> just this out of control. <laughs> She's in the middle now. I mean, it's not fine tuned yet. I still gotta adjust some stuff, but I mean, we're there. Now I can really grasp my head around. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it is so aggressive. I did not plan on it being this aggressive. Uh, you know, I could go forward more. We'll figure that out after. I really want to get the transmission in here and, like I said, the Pro Charger and kind of see where else it's gonna go. If uh, if things change, I'll cut that tube and then move it to the next one and move it forward a little bit more. But I would say this is definitely a mid-engine car now. Oh yeah, I have to strap my feet in and <laughs> it's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's something. Oh my gosh, look at that, that is wild. <laughs> that concludes this episode, thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys had a laugh, this is uh, <laughs> I tell you what, this is this is the point where it's not me anymore, it's the car, and the car's gonna tell me what it wants, and I love it. <laughs> that is absolutely bonkers. It's gonna be cool if that is where it goes, making all the the firewall and all that stuff. Be interesting to see how that translates, swooping back like that. Huh. Well, the next episode, we'll uh, hopefully get the transmission in, get that in and see what it looks like. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs>